Uh, Christy, Christy, uh, what week is it, mate? What what uh, what week is it, mate? <laughs> I think we know what week it is, isn't it? Anytime you pull out a Brumbies jersey. <laughs> it is Tar Week. It's the best time of the year, mate. I, you know I always get up for Tar Week. Anyone who is anyone, if you're a Brumbies I've, fan, gets up for Tar Week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to channel my inner Matt Nobbs here at the moment, the Brumbies chairman, and say, is this, is this derby, is this matchup, is this week, is it dead? Because at the moment, 12 straight for the Brumbies over the Waratahs, and they'll be looking to go... 13, we know how it ended a couple of months ago now, almost anyway, 40 points to 16 it was to the to the Brumbies down at GIO Stadium on the 6th of April, and here we are actually a month later, and they're going to go do battle again. And really, it's the Waratahs' campaign on life support. It very much is. Uh, in answer to your question earlier, is, is this dead or not? No, more. I want more. I want more victories. I'm I'm enjoying it, and I'm going to ride it. And it's uh, it's as much as as the the Brumbies have had a dominance over this this particular fixture. There's a reason we get up for it. Uh, it's always a great clash. And and while the dominance of the previous fixture um, was was uh, very much an, an incredibly enjoyable evening for me, um, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's always a very intense uh, conf- you know, clash, and it's always something that we all enjoy. It's usually a close game, so and I expect nothing less. Yeah, you're you're not wrong about that. Um, welcome to the Raw Rugby Podcast, this rapid fire edition where we take you through all the team news uh, as we approach round twelve here, and it's heating up. A month to go, the run home is pretty clear. Uh, from an Australian perspective anyway, it's the Brumbies trying to chase the Hurricanes and the Blues who are up at first and second. The Brumbies at third on 35 points, the Chiefs on 33, the Reds 27, and that's a pretty established top five. After that, you've got the Rebels, the Highlanders, and the Drua rounding up out the top eight. Uh, the Rebels in particular are desperate for a win. They're on 24 points, but they haven't had a, a win in a couple of weeks. Uh, Moana Pacifica on in ninth spot on 14 points. The Crusaders, if you can believe it, on 13 points with the Waratahs on 12 and Western Force on 10. Mathematically, everyone on a chance, but that those the maths really starts to get thrown out the window and rubbed out if you lose this weekend, if you're a Crusaders, Waratahs or Force fan, particularly with the matches still to come. Uh, Nick, the first game, though, one that uh, for the Chiefs, they'll be desperate to ensure that they don't slip up given that they're inside the top four at the moment with the Reds hot in their heels. Uh, they're up against Moana Pacifica. They are, and uh, they have good reason to uh, to make sure that they, they get over the line here considering, as we'll, we'll allude to a little later, both the Brumbies and the Reds have quite a favourable run home. So there is a, a, very, a good opportunity for them to, to leapfrog over the Chiefs if they drop a match. But... Clayton McMillan, there is a couple of key uh, changes for this Chiefs side. Uh, D-Mac, D Mac, Damian McKenzie, is out, which is the big, uh, the big announcement. He copped a head knock um, and left the field early uh, last week in their demolition uh, of the Western Force, um, and he'll be replaced by uh, Josh uh, Yakom in the uh, in the centres. As w- while uh, Imoni Nawara is the other big one, is being is also going to be given uh, the week off uh, for for the Chiefs, but. All things aside, uh, this is still a very strong Chiefs side. I think the the decision to have Luke Jacobson back, uh, he played very well last week and kind of giving himself some established time there is a, is a really good inclusion. And as much as Tana Umanga uh, has done a lot with this Moana Pacifica side, I think that loss in Tonga last week uh, was a crucial one in terms of the context of their campaign, Christy. And I don't see them winning this one. Yeah, it's a long way back, and we know the Chiefs are in great form at the moment. They very much put away that four side, 56 points to seven last week, and they build off the back of the momentum, having beaten the Tars in Sydney a week earlier. Yeah, I'm with you. The Moana's made so many changes right across the entire side. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs have lost a couple, no Nara, no McKenzie at fly half, but Sammy Sony Tokiaho is back. Uh, in the hooking spot. So, yeah, I think they'll run away and they'll, they'll be big victors there, you would imagine. Um, the Reds and the Rebels, that's probably one of the games of the round. There's actually there's, there's great contest right across the board. It's probably the most exciting rounds of, of rugby we've had for a while. Um, the Reds, though, 
Yes, they put away the Rebels easily in Melbourne a couple of months ago, but Taniela Tupo is starting to find some form. The Reds off the back of a really big win, important drought-breaking year uh, win last week, 25 years indeed, uh, when they took down the Crusaders 33-28. to 28. So can they back it up? And that's the big question. They're buoyed by the news that we revealed on the Raw that Hunter Paisami re-signed for another couple of years, which is great news for them. But it's a it's a big game for the Reds to be able to say that we can go consistently play with the chip on their shoulder that uh, Jeffrey Tamunga and Alan was talking about on our earlier edition of the podcast this week when they can back up consistently week to week. And so putting away the Rebels will be imperative for any hopes of a top four finish for the Reds. Yep, we're, we're at that time of the year. It's it's the crucial clashes. If you are the Rebels, you have to target this game um, very much so because their run, they've got a very hard run home, uh, the Rebels have. They're playing the Chiefs next week. Um, they're going down to Canberra to play the Brumbies, which is a tough prospect for anyone in the competition the week after. Um, and then afterwards, they're, they're off to Fiji to face the Drua, and uh, that's already uh, looming as a very spicy clash considering the previous what happened when when those two sides did battle earlier this year. So if you are the Rebels uh, and you are the likes of, of of Kevin Foote, you have to you have to target this particular clash. Um, and the, their final spot, they might be sitting in, in the finals contentions right now, but uh, it, they're far from guaranteed right now. And I think one more win would push them over the edge uh, to, to locking in that particular position. The big changes for me is, uh, is kind of the changes... Uh, in, in the back line with Nick Just and Philippa Daugunu coming in uh, for Dave uh, Falawi and Matt Proctor, who are both injured uh, at present. As you alluded to, Taniela Tupo um, is finding some form starting again, which is a really good, uh, I think, a, a, a good sign uh, for that side because he, he did um, look uh, promising in that period of, t- of, of for a lot of that game against the Blues. And really, it kind of all, <laughs> it was really that second half where things kind of fell apart. But as GTA alluded to earlier this week, I, I really like how the Reds are looking and I know that they'll be targeting this run home, Christy. They look dangerous. Yeah, yeah, they, they certainly do. They welcome back James O'Connor and Tate McDermott via the bench. Uh, Tate, uh, Les Kiss clearly rewarding the the performances of Kalani Thomas and Lawson Crichton who put together his best performance of his career, I'd say, by leading the Reds to victory we didn't see Harry McLaughlin Phillips off the bench. So good reward for those couple of guys. Um, yes, I, I think even if they don't win, they need to ensure that they get a bonus point here, the Rebels. That's that's the important thing. Um, one or two bonus points probably gets them across the line. Uh, so it's a massive, massive couple of weeks looming for the Melbourne Rebels. I'm going to tip the Reds. I think you probably... Uh, it would be a far-fetched one to say that they won't win this given the continuity of their play. It's a pretty good pack they've got. And the Rebels, they're still just under this cloud. They were living in limbo at the moment. They're not sure what's happening with their futures just yet. And I think it was uh, Morgan Terranui earlier in the week that said it's almost a death by a thousand cuts at the moment. And it's Mm. probably a bang on. It's an astute kind of comment because it's not easy to live in this environment. Who are you tipping for this one, Nick? I'm going Reds as well. Um, It's as much as I just feel like when, when it comes to momentum, where the squad is looking right now um, and just the, the sheer belief that the Reds are are starting to show right now that that Highlanders win a few weeks ago has set off a real desire to, to come home with a wet sail. And they've shown that against the blues at home. They showed that against the Crusaders in Christchurch. Uh, And even though uh, they have had a couple of losses along the way, um, they're looking the stronger side, plus add the fact that they're at Suncorp. Um, I'm going Reds. Yeah, generally speaking, I think the couple of losses they have had, it, it's been almost kicks up the backside for mm. them that have almost worked for them for this side that's still growing uh, in its infancy somewhat under Les Kiss. This is promises to be an absolute blockbuster. The Hurricanes going up uh, to Eden Park to take on the Blues. Stars right across the park, uh, all blacks right across the park. It's the top of the table clash. The Blues are point adrift from the Hurricanes. A few changes to both sides, but pretty settled too. 
Yeah, if, if this is not the just not just the game of the round, uh, Christy, it might be the game of the regular season. In all honesty, because Hurricanes have looked fantastic uh, for for most of the season until that loss to the Brumbies, uh, and they more than made up for it against the Waratahs. Uh, and they're traveling up to face probably the other real danger side in in the Blues coming out of New Zealand. And you know, many if if it is the case that it is an all New Zealand final, it has to be between these two sides because they look like the most dangerous sides of the two. The big one for me for the Blues is a certain Rico Yuani is out. He is um he's out with a with a concussion, but his replacement is a player that I really rate very highly, which is Zahn Sullivan, who many Waratahs fans will unfortunately be familiar with because he's the person responsible for that death bell. Uh, drop goal at Leichhardt Oval a few a few years ago that uh, that saw the Blues scrape home against the Waratahs. Um, good memory. Really, yeah, really, really good player, really exciting player. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes will have TJ Pirinara returning to halfback. You think see they see they've got the most number of tries in the whole competition? Yeah, yep. yeah, just, just casually. casually. Just, yeah, well, it's it's. I don't know if you'll be telling too many people about the try that he got last weekend. I think you just managed to be there at the right time. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's an embarrassment of riches when you can bring on, you know, given how easily they put away the Waratahs, the Hurricanes last week, and then they weren't even starting TJ Perinara nor Geordie Barrett uh, or or Xavier Numia. So. Uh, they're three big inclusions. Yep, San Sullivan is a, a good return at fullback. So AJ Lamb at outside centre in place of Rico Yuani. Oh, um, the Blues weren't <laughs> the Blues weren't at their best last week, but I think for the first forty minutes they were playing with width. Went away from the game plan, and then the second half they decided to keep it tighter. Four tries. They all came from. Well, three of the four came from the forwards, and more often than not, just came through being too strong and going that route one tra- channel. So, I, I dare say they'll try to do the similar sort of thing against the Hurricanes. They probably won't have quite as much success against a pretty physical Hurricanes pack. It's it's afternoon footy, which also is another factor in this. So, hopefully, the conditions in Auckland are nice. I like the Blues' back lines. Arne Sullivan definitely is a, a welcomed return. I'll probably change my mind within 24 hours. I'll go the Blues <laughs> at home. They're, they're a tough one to win, uh, to beat at home. Uh, um, just for, for argument's sake in this particular one, and if you're if you're reading, if you end up reading the previews and I've changed hands again, uh, it's a testament to the quality of the fixture. So, so go easy on us. But uh, I will say Hurricanes to this one. Really, it's the battle of physicality. This game is won and lost, and as you alluded to, these packs are physical. And if there's one thing that I've been consistently impressed with, uh, in particularly with the Blues, is just going the, the sheer physicality. If you win the physical contest, you win the game uh, for them, essentially. And I've been very impressed with the likes of Papa Ilya and Hoskins Satutu, who just continues to grow and grow uh, this season. I think he's top five players of the season for me. So yeah. for argument's sake, I'll go Hurricanes. Yeah, well, uh, I think it's um, Brendan Iosi I- who uh, is another guy that, uh, Braden Iosi rather, who would be perhaps challenging Satutu in that area, Hunter Paisami, another one, probably being in the top five players this year so far. Um, Highlanders Crusaders, this is a really intriguing game because the Crusaders, we know, struggling to beat any Australian team at the moment except for the Rebels a couple of weeks ago. But, wow, that's a uh, – it's – it's seventh against tenth, but there's only six points between them. But you look at the couple of guys that have come back for the Crusaders this week, and it's Tamati Williams at loose head prop, which means that Joe Moody drops out of the squad. Thanks very much. Uh, and the other one, Cody Taylor, we saw him in the box last week, standing behind Rob Penny, who I just imagine would have been hoping that Cody could have been actually out there rather than with him up in the coach's box. But those two returning just adds so much because the Crusaders line out, it may have been getting a little bit better, but it's not been brilliant. But the physicality, the experience, the the real chip on the shoulder desire, the mongrel that Cody Taylor provides by being out there, coupled with the fact that Scott Barrett has been named, he's fit to play in the second row after leaving inside the first 20 last week. They're going to be tough to beat, I think extremely tough to beat. You know, for, for a South Island derby with the two sides that you consider misfiring, I don't think there's any such thing as a non-fiery South Island derby, uh, even if the sides aren't, aren't 
haven't been playing as well. I mean, the High the Highlanders do have a couple of a player coming back themselves, a certain Ethan De Groot, very respected and well regarded All Black, um, who is coming back. Uh, it's which is, which is a very very key inclusion, uh, as well as a uh, Nicola Broughton, who kind of also is back into the starting side, shifting to uh, shifting into into the loose forwards. But you are completely correct. The if before Williams and Cody Taylor was announced. I was going to say I don't know what the what the current winning streak is. It, it, the, the number escapes me, but I do know the Crusaders have had the rub of the green over the Highlanders for a considerable period of time. The Highlanders, I think, are in the middle of a of an eighteen or nineteen match losing streak against Kiwi opposition, and I was thinking that they might be favourites to finally get a, a win over their over their their cousins to the north. But Williams and Taylor significantly changed that. Uh, such experience, but also. Just aggression, extremely aggressive, brilliant, fierce competitors. I'm, I am at a loss for this one, Christy. I actually don't know which way I'm going to go. Well, I can tell you that the Crusaders have won nine of their last ten against the Highlanders, and to be honest, that's not that surprising given that they won seven competitions straight uh, between 2017 and <laughs> uh, 2023. Rather, uh, I'm going the Crusaders. I, I think. I was almost probably leaning to them, given that the Highlanders, yes, they beat the Western Force uh, and Moana Pacifica, but they're two sides outside the top eight. They're not brilliant sides. I know the Crusaders are too, but um, coming back from Tonga, it's not necessarily, it's not like it's next door. Uh, it was a really wet affair uh, last weekend. Uh, I'm sure they would have enjoyed themselves afterwards, um, given it was an early early-ish kind of kick off. Um, I just think the Crusaders, the experience that they bring back, uh, Havili another week at 10. Hotham, I thought, was quite impressive off the bench, uh, added a bit of spark. It allows Mitch Drummond to come off uh, as, as a finisher on this occasion. I'm going to go the Crusaders, probably one to seven, but it's going to be a belter, and I imagine there's going to be a lot of students there down at the zoo from – uh, cheering on their landers as they look to try to seal, uh, and I think they pretty much almost do seal a spot in the top eight uh, and finals if they get across the line here. Uh, here we are. We, we spoke about it beforehand, the Waratahs and the Brumbies. Just before we get to that, the Wallaroos are going to have a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say curtain raiser, but it's very much a, a double header there. And given it's a Saturday afternoon, great opportunity to, experience a bit of club rugby, uh, then jump out on the light rail, bus, train, whatever transport method you're going to get there, uh, and then go watch the Wallaroos up against Canada and their pack four opener. So that should be a belter of a game, which leads into Waratahs, Brumbies, Allianz Stadium. There's 25,000 people there last year for it. I was there. Eddie Jones was there. He was getting cheers at that point in time with his face on the big screen. <laughs> Uh, imagine the reception he would get today or in a couple of days' time. Uh, it should be a good game. It always is a good game. It's desperate, de a desperate needed win for Darren Coleman's Waratahs. It is. It'll be an absolutely a, a belter of an afternoon. Uh, quickly, quick fun fact for that. First match for Joe Yap in charge of the Wallaroos. And uh, the last time that the Wallaroos actually beat Canada was way back in 2014. Uh, so That's it actually has... Yeah, it has been a long time between uh, Canada is a, quite a strong side in in, in the women's rugby so, uh, side of the world, um, and I see I do th see a a, a, mut, a a really 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 good clash ahead of that uh, ahead of that derby um, that you should go check out. Good bit of history, uh, good uh, amazing moment, um, which you should absolutely love. As we are recording this now, the Wallaroos squad is still to be uh, to be named, but. Uh, when we do, we'll, we'll be dropping that and, and providing a whole bunch of information on that. But getting to this derby, oh, DC, he has got his work cut out in terms of the, the depth in the, in the forward pack. And this is where I think the Brumbies are going to target uh, the Waratahs. Uh, it, it very, as alluded to, kind of, we re reported it, we're recording this on a Wednesday, but uh, re reported earlier today, they have some new, the, the Waratahs have two new arrivals uh, on loan, a certain uh, World Cup prop in Pony Pharma Silly who is immediately coming into the side uh, onto the reserve bench um, from a, as a loan inclusion, uh, which is a very, very exciting inclusion for the Waratahs, uh, as well as a certain prop, uh, a certain hooker, rather, by the name of Jay Fokalafi, who replaces Julian Heaven, 
um, very much a, a, a key draw in from from the shoot shield. Uh, but oh my goodness, the I do really like what the Brumbies have done here with their set with their forward pack. They're retaining um, Alan Alatoa uh, in the starting row, but bringing Harry Vella on combined some really an experienced head with a lot of power is a really good move. Plus also it, it leaves the likes of, of James Slipper and Billy Pollard on the bench that you'll trust the Brumbies to want to come home hard um, off the back of the set piece there. Uh, a lot of really great uh, inclusions there. Rory Scott, Charlie Cale, um, and interestingly, Jack Debrasini starts uh, over Noah Lalesio, which I think is a very interesting decision. Christy, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I actually haven't um, put in a call just yet in regards to if that's just an injury, if it's just an opportunity to get some minutes under their belt. Uh, we know that Lolisa has been in pretty good form and his goal kicking has been bang on. So I wouldn't imagine it's been anything uh, else. Uh, yep, there are changes, changes for the Waratahs in that back row as well. Jed Holloway, Jalen Gamble and uh, Lockie Swinton are going to be making up the back row. So... All sorts of mixing and matching taking place at the moment. Uh, Max Jorgensen out for the rest of the super season. So Mark, no one in the new RC will stay at fullback. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see Charlie Kale back in that number eight jersey. Another opportunity to press his claims against what will be a pretty... I know the Waratahs haven't been great, but at home they've played pretty well to date this year, especially their first half. So they show with the depth at the moment in the second half. Um, but that'll be a stern first test and, and vital for the Brumbies to to win that, to ensure that they finish in that top four, but uh, even as high as top three, because you'd much rather, I think, see the Brumbies having a home final, taking on one of those sides that might have come sixth or seventh, perhaps, rather than fourth and fifth, and you're taking on maybe even the Chiefs. Um, I, I see the Brumbies winning, but probably being too good. Season's on the line for the Waratahs, but there's just so much changing there in that forward pack mm, inexperience I... to come off the bench. And Pono Farmacilli, as much as he's a World Cup member, he's just not played any minutes. And I think we saw him get a little bit exposed recently in the shoot shield uh, in club rugby competition when he just came up recently and had a crack up here from Melbourne. So, yeah. It'll be, uh, it'll be an intriguing game, that's for sure. Uh, one that, if you're a Wallabies hopeful, you've still got to stand up and be counted for. Yeah, absolutely. It's I th- I agree. I think it will be the Brumbies. It will not be a repeat of Canberra. I don't think it will be a 40-16 to 16 win. Uh, the, the Waratahs at home are always a tough prospect, particularly when it comes to games like this. And, I, I mean, looking back at, the, at a lot of these games in Sydney, even though the Brumbies have the rub of the green, these matches in Sydney have always been, I think the last couple have been decided by less than a converted try. So I anticipate a, a very close match, even despite all of the chopping and changing for DC. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, it's if it's, if there's any time the Waratahs have to gut fire, it's now. And considering yeah. what is on the stake for, what is on the line for the Brumbies here, because, hey, one of those top two sides in, in New Zealand could could slip up. And that, that suddenly off, opens the table for the Brumbies to go, maybe even go higher up the ladder. They can't afford to drop a game. It's a, there's still a lot riding on us. Yeah, it's a really good point because uh, how the Blues and Hurricanes then finish in the last three weeks, there's every chance that there's a, a tight game. Both teams have got a couple of tough matches towards the back end of the season. So, yeah, valid point. Um, the last game of round 12, the Western Force, Currently, cellar dwellers at the moment on 10 points up against the Fiji and Drua at home, uh, who are on 17th. They're in eighth spot at the moment. It's a big game for both sides and their final ambitions. It is. And sticking with the, the points that we've been alluded to earlier in this podcast, this game's really going to be about physicality, similarly. Um, and the Drua, as much as the they've really struggled on the road in that, and that uh, that curse seems to still, uh, you know, still seems seems to still affect them considerably. If there's any chance for them to break that duck, right, and it is it is right now because the, the force have really struggled in terms of matching sides physically, um, particularly around the ruck and in general play. Uh, Cron, fortunately, Simon Cron has got a lot of good uh, names returning. Um, the, the biggest, of course, being Isaac Rodder and Nick White, who are into the starting side, um, and. I really am glad to see Marley Pierce um, back in that starting side as well. I think uh, just considering the the challenges that 
the force have had uh, in the front row and in the set piece, just to see not the, not just the likes of Marley Pierce starting, but Harry Hooper off the bench. Uh, you really hope that that should be enough in terms of the forward pack uh, to really kind of set a good foundation for that side to to really be unleashed, Christy. And considering that the force uh, the the the, the Drua uh, have only made a couple of small changes, mostly in the back line. Uh, you'd think that that the force might sense an opportunity to really get some sort of dominance in the set piece. Uh, yeah, well, they need some dominance at the set piece because, as the Brumbies found out last week, it was an almighty challenge, and they only just scraped across the line. So, um, good to highlight the fact that the force. Uh, sorry, rather, the Drura struggle on the road. They've only won one of their 20 games on the road and, in fact, mm. they've lost uh, each of their last 12 away from Fiji. So probably the history is stacked against them. The Western Force, Western Australia, Perth, it's probably about as far away as the Drua could go as well. It's another week on the road mm. uh, away from families, etc. So, yeah, the Force, they're generally speaking – at their strongest at home. I, I see them winning for that reason as well. We, we know that they struggled in the wet in Fiji when they met earlier in the year, but a, a couple of strong welcomed inclusion. Awesome to see Harry Hooper back after a wretched couple of years with injuries. So uh, an opportunity for them to keep their season alive, but the drawer, they'll be desperate knowing that they've got a couple of home games uh, to come. If they can jag one here, really sets them up to be able to target a, a sixth-place finish rather than uh, where they might be in a couple of weeks' time, which is around seventh of eighth. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to. I, I think the Hurricanes-Blues is probably the match of the round, but there's so many good games right the way through there, and I'm really intrigued by that Crusaders-Highlanders match uh, under the roof at Force Bar Stadium. Yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of games to look forward to. Even though uh, the Trans Tasman clashes are over for the time being, I know we I think we have one more to go before before the end of the regular season. Uh, there is still a lot of rugby to be played, and this uh, this story is far from played out when it comes to the regular season. Christy, it's going to be a, a very close finish for a lot of sides. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, until next week when I'm joined by Matt Tamua, that's a wrap. But Good to run everything through uh, here on this rapid fire edition of the Rural Rugby Podcast. Round 12 action, not far away. It all kicks off on Friday evening with Moana Pacifica hosting the Chiefs into the Rebels up at Suncorp Stadium. Taniela Tupo returning back to Brisbane to take on his Queensland Reds, his former side. So a lot to look forward to. Look forward to next week as well. Thanks very much.